So welcome back everybody to this video series on how to make a car in Autodesk Fusion 360. So you guys have been so incredibly kind to me this past week. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your comments. I'm trying to be consistent. I'm trying to upload once a week. So your encouragement really, really helps. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I have a couple of announcements before we get started on this tutorial. Uh, number one is that I will be doing a few more YouTube live sessions like the one I did two weeks ago with the Airbus A330. And um, the next one's most probably gonna be a Dassault 6X. And um, date has not been decided yet, but watch, I keep an eye out for that one. I think it was really nice. People were just tuning in while they were doing some work. Um, so it's really nice because I used to do that with other people and I thought this time um, people were doing that with my videos, which is really nice. Uh, announcement two is uh, the Q&A. So some of you have requested a Q&A, but none of you have actually posted any questions. So what I would appreciate is you can post your questions down in the comments below. You can ask me anything, any professional, personal question, what I've been up to, whatever you like. Uh, but if you'd rather it be anonymous, I'm happy to set up a portal or a sort of form on Google uh, that will accept your submissions anonymously. So fire away, you can ask me absolutely anything you like. Number three is uh, Patreon projects. So I'm currently working on uh, hosting an international design challenge with one of my close friends, Sid. And we did this actually in 2020. It was called the Invictus Design Challenge. And uh, we're gonna set up a new one, hopefully for this August. So we're just working very hard towards that at the moment. Once that competition is done, um, then we'll look into doing some more serious Patreon products. But in the meantime, please go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon. It does help me out a lot. All right, let's get cracking back to this YouTube tutorial. So the first thing I'm about to do is I'm going to verbally say what I'm about to do. And if you like, listen to what I'm about to say, pause the video and then try it out yourself. Or obviously you always have the other option, which is to follow along as I do it. But I do recommend just listen to what I'm about to say and then try it out yourself and then see how I do it. And if you had a different way of approaching it, do post it in the comments below. Okay, so what I want to do in this, um, in this tutorial is I want to create this section over here. So if you follow my mouse, if you were this tip of where we start, um, ended a few videos ago, coming down here, creating the arch, the arc um, over the wheel, ending somewhere over here, connecting it to this place, drawing it up all the way up here. And you'll notice that actually there's a small section that we did not create last time, which is this section over here. Okay, so that's what I want to do in this tutorial. Now, if you, were, if you like, please do pause this video and try it out yourself. Okay, so I am now going to create a new sketch from the side plane. And remembering like last time, um, enabling 3D sketch is important in this case. I'm going to click on fit point spline. Basically, again, just following every single step we've already done in the past. Um, again, it, this won't let me snap to anything yet. I just have to rotate it a little bit in 3D space, zoom into the point I want, and that's the point I'd like. Start from there, select the right sketch, or sorry, right plane, and maybe I want to go um, up until this point over here. Okay, and I would like to, because we created this on the right plane, and we created the 3D sketch also on the right plane, our tangent controls are already active. So again, I'm just gonna click on that green dot there, press M on my keyboard, and very gently move it a bit so I can turn it into a curved spline. So very, very subtly, making sure we're not making any abrupt changes at any time. Okay, so that looks good from the side. Again, we wanna also check this out from the top view. And obviously it's not in the correct position. So I'm gonna press M on my keyboard and I'm gonna try dragging it down vertically. So maybe somewhere there, I'm okay with that. And you can see naturally it's done this, but that's not really what we want. What we want is to follow this curve um, along this curve that we created in the previous videos. So I'm going to um, click on that dot there, which is the tangent handle again press M on my keyboard, and I'm gonna drag this back. Just so it's roughly, there we go. Maybe a little bit more. 
Okay, and let's have a look from the bottom, uh, from the side, sorry. That's, that looks good to me. And from the side, it also looks decent. So remembering even in last time when uh, we created um, stuff from the front view, sometimes it won't allow to match up. And this is because of our inconsistencies of setting up blueprints. And this is where blueprint dimensions, scales, and um, the position of each blueprint is incredibly important to be accurate. But I'm okay with this. I know it's sort of the, the, the front view inconsistency. So I'm gonna be as consistent as I can you know, from, the, from the top view as well as from the side view. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and press okay for this bit. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, the next thing I want to do is draw a arch over here. So there are two ways we can do this. We can either just use the fit point spline and sort of try and come up with an estimated arc, or we can try and create an arc itself. I usually just do the spline and I try and do it as closely as possible. But um, let's try it with a three point arc in this case. So again, uh, it's a 3D sketch is on. I want to select that, but of course it's not gonna let me do that yet. So I need to shift and move orbit a little bit. And now that we're in 3D space, it's gonna let me snap on to that point there. Perfect. Go to the right side. And up until here. And now somewhere, somewhere there. So you can actually tell that this arc over here isn't actually a perfect arc. It might perhaps be a perfect arc up until a certain point, but clearly you can see if I take that as a starting point and that is the ending point, it's, it won't like it. You can see clearly that it's not actually fitting the thing as perfectly as I'd like it to. So maybe I'm gonna try adjusting the end point of this arc and seeing to where it might fit. So maybe till somewhere there. Of course, if we were starting the arc from here to here, maybe there would have been an improvement, but we can clearly see that maybe from here till here, the arc is perfect, but then it sort of splines, it, it, it extends itself as a spline rather than as a perfect arc. So I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna create a fit point spline, which will connect from that end point till perhaps that point there. And what I want to do is I wanna make sure that these two lines are actually tangential. So I'm going to click on the, I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna select the tangent, and then I'm gonna click on the second curve. And we can see now that that has created a tangency uh, profile. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to also now go to the top view and we can see from the top view, it actually looks decent. I think it's a relatively flat area um, from that um, from the top. So when we look at it from the side, then it's gonna be absolutely flat. There's no sort of complex curves uh, like the rest of the car has. Maybe perhaps starting from here, but so far it's okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is we wanna go from here to here. So again, just click on your fit point spline, move along, go from here. And then just try and estimate where this line is going to end. And I'm going to say somewhere there. Now, there's a reason why I didn't want to go all the way down. Of course, if you choose to, you can absolutely do that. There's no problem. Um, but I personally haven't done that because I would probably later on create a line here and sweep it across using some guide rails. Uh, very similar to what we did in the aircraft series where we took a sketch and we swept it using a path and a guide rail. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to create another spline from here to here. So we're gonna go from here to that point there. And again, I'm just gonna maneuver this in 3D space, so like that. And this one also needs to go in a bit. Perfect, I'm gonna press okay. And I'm just gonna have a look from the top and see how that looks. That doesn't look very good. Um, so perhaps there's more to this than we realize. Um, 
Now, what actually might be nice is before we create this over here, I'm just going to delete this first and delete that projection as well. I'm going to create a spline that goes from here to here and from there to there, and then we can try and extend it. So just move a little bit, go from here to here, and then go from here to here. Remember, if it's not allowing you to snap, make sure you orbit just very subtly, and then it'll allow you to snap to the 3D point. Okay, so I want to try and create some sort of a curve here because currently it's just a line. And then we can use this later on to also add some curvature to the rest of the line. So just a little bit. And now we can have a look from the top. Seems like there's some more mismatches. And this one I want to Perhaps we could keep it like that for the continuity towards the backside. And now what I can do is I can create another spline from here to here. And that way now it will try and follow the natural curvature based on the previous curve. So again, I'm going to try and create a tangential connection between this one and this one. So I'm going to click on that green line, tangent, and then I'm going to click on this spline here. Okay, but it's not letting me do that. And that's perhaps because we've maneuvered this already in two, um, in two dimensions. So this has been, actually one second. So if I do this and this, okay, there we go. My bad. So if, if you wanna add a, a tangency constraint, but it won't let you select this one and add a tangency constraint based on the tangent itself. That's okay. Just try clicking on the main line instead of the tangent line. Click on the tangent tool, and then you can go ahead and do that. So there we go. It's automatically created that curve, which is absolutely beautiful. Okay. So again, for the bottom bit, I'm just going to add a bit of curvature there. And then I'm going to press OK. I want to look at it from the top view. And now you can see to try and follow the up bit, this one has already created the curvature in the other dimension. So that's cool. Um, I, perhaps we can activate tangent handle. And I want to try and minimize this because I feel like it's extruding out too much. So we'll try and do something like that. Remember, it's still tangential. I mean, I, I'd hope so. It's still tangential in this plane. Okay, it's not anymore. We can try and shift it back to its original position. Go back top. And so from the side plane, we moved it up and down. And from the top plane, I think we can control it by doing something like this. So from the top plane, if we do up and down, that won't affect the curvature from the side, and it didn't. So these are some little tricks and things you'll pick up along the way when you're working with 3D objects. Of uh, When you control, including the uh, aircraft and helicopter series, when we scale up a T-spline from one angle, so you, you're dealing with two dimensions from one plane, so that may be your left and right and up and down. But when you move to the top plane and then you do up and down and left and right, your left and right from the top plane and your left and right from the side plane is actually going to be this, the same. But your up and down from the side plane and your up and down from the top plane is actually in and out from the side view's perspective. So there are multiple ways of maneuvering things in 3D space, uh, but it's always nice to deal with two dimensions at a time. Okay, I'm going to now go ahead and press OK. And I'm going to save this. And now essentially what we have is this entire section over here. But remember, 
that because these are now separate lines, so this line is actually a separate entity from this line, it is going to allow us to patch it without making any modifications. So let's have a look and try it out. So surface, patch, first one I want to patch is this one over here. So one, two, remember, do not enable chaining, three and four, okay, there we go. So I can't actually select that because that is from a previous sketch. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to click on one of the sketch elements and I'm going to press edit sketch. And I just, all I need to do is just create a spline from here, maybe till here, till here. And now that line can act as my guide rail as well. So finish the sketch. I want to patch, disable chaining. One, two, three, and four. There we go. So that's created our little missing surface. And because the sketch has disappeared, I'm just going to re-enable the sketch and click on patch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There we go. That's a beautiful patch right there. And you can see that from the, oh, look at that, that's beautiful. So if you look at it from the front view, you, you, you can see the sort of beautiful complex curvature uh, from this side. And then if you go to the side view, you can see something that looks pretty flat. But if you go to the top view again, you'll see that this is actually curving all the way down. Um, so sort of below what we can comprehend from purely a top view, um, which is nice. It's always nice to double confirm with different views. And I feel like I've made a mistake here because it's going up instead of following that. So I'm just going to edit that sketch again. And maybe I will just delete this for now. And I'm going to try and recreate the arc. So three point, we go one, two, and three. Perhaps that might work. So let's try that. Oh, okay. So let's try and maneuver the center of the circle, actually. Nope, that doesn't work. So create arc, three point arc, one, two, and three. Let's try finish the sketch and it should automatically update. Oh no, it didn't. Okay, so let's try and edit the patch now. Most of the time it should automatically update the patch, but maybe because we removed an element and added a new one, it's struggling. So no, no problem at all. Just right click on the feature, edit feature, and just select that curve again and press OK. okay it doesn't like that. So disable, enable chaining, and just reselect the curves to create the boundaries. And there we go. Now you can disable that sketch because we don't need it anymore. Press OK, and there we go. OK, I think there's another issue here. No problem. Let's go back. So you'll often experience stuff like this. You'll do something, and it won't work. You will try something else, and that particular element will work, but then it may have ruined something else. And that is a part of design. There's nothing uh, wrong about it. Um, just be patient and um, have fun in the process. So just create a tangency control there, finish sketch, move that. There we go. Now that is very, very smooth. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, please do consider what I said in the introduction regarding the Patreon sessions, the Q&A, and the lives as well. So if there's anything in particular you'd like to see for the YouTube live, please do let me know in the comments below. I have received a few requests, and uh, they're definitely on my list. I've put them down. Um, on my notepad, and uh, I will come back to them whenever I get the time. So thank you so much, um, and have a great rest of the week. I will see you soon. Take care.